Oh. All right, men's Royal Rumble. Boy, God, a lot of nothing happened in this match. Mm -hmm. AJ Styles is in there. Shinsuke Nakamura is in there. Austin Theory is in there. Robert Roode is number four, and he squares off with AJ Styles. And yes, the crowd chants T N A. Yes, they chanted. Th they chanted T N A. They should have chanted Fortune because it was their fraction in T. Nobody remembers that. And it doesn't matter because AJ threw him out immediately. Hell of a hell of a square down they had. So. Ridge Holland is five, and Brian has done his speech about the guys who are stuck in NXT forever a thousand times. But I'd like to point out that while Santos Escobar and Pete Dunne and Tomasa Ciampa are killing time in NXT, Austin Theory and Ridge Holland are in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, imagine they sure that. are. Imagine that. By the way, I love uh, I love Pat McAfee. I know Craig doesn't. I'm, I'm no. a fan of his, but uh, no. <laughs> sometimes he's just like he 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 ventures too far into gimmick territory, like when. Bobby Roode comes out, and he starts going crazy about Bob Roode. This is the year that Bob Roode is going to win the Royal Rumble and go on to WrestleMania. I'm like, what are you talking about? You have to have something better to say than to try to convince me that Bob Roode is going to win this fucking thing and go to WrestleMania. And then he's immediately thrown out, by the way. Yeah. Bob Roode. Bob Roode did not win the Royal Rumble. No. Uh, Montez, Ford is out there. Montez Ford is out there. Damian Priest, Sami Zayn. Dude, what about Johnny Knoxville? He's not out there yet. I didn't oh. get to him. Here, J right, right, notes. right before Johnny Knoxville came out, I wrote, this is the most boring rumble ever. Uh, the crowd is singing for El Generico, who has not been seen in pro wrestling since 2013. And then, it's supposed to be a heel, by the way. Yep. Yes. Then Johnny Knoxville came out, takes down Sammy, and points to the sign. He's got <laughs> his all white hair. He's got his goggles on. It looks like Quicksilver from the X-Men movies. He th throws one elbow AJ Styles. They actually showed him how to throw an elbow. Oh, so my good. God. He fucking threw a shoot fucking forearm at AJ Styles. He hit him so fucking hard. Oh. And then AJ's like, well, this guy's taking a lot of shit and jackass. I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. And he fucking clobbered yep. Johnny of Knoxville. Of That's what you did to him. Just beat the fuck out of this That's guy. That's why he's there. Oh. So they, they hit him with a giant splash. and uh... To the legs. Yeah. God, Montez Ford, this guy doesn't know you're he is going to his legs. Like a normal wrestler would be, you know, not expecting it, but whatever. He splashes Johnny Knoxville right in the fucking knees from about 30 feet in the air. But that's the end of that guy. We have Angelo Dawkins at 10. Michael Cole calls him Hawkins. And Knoxville got uh, eliminated by Sammy, by the way. Yeah. Who kicked him as hard as he fucking could right in the face. Yeah. Knoxville Johnny Knoxville bumps down. Dude, Johnny Knoxville was better than 25% of the women in the Women's Rumble. Easy. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when this show was over, I thought, you know what match I want at WrestleMania is uh, Knoxville and Bad Bunny. Sure. One-on-one. -on -one. Why not? God. Give me one good reason they shouldn't do that. You can't. So, Omos is out there being a big giant, throwing out both Street Profits. Chad Gable is number 13. He attempts to take charge, saying, let's gang up on the very tall person. And this leads to Damian Priest being sacrificed so everyone else can jump Omos from behind. And as the pile is pushing him out, AJ finally hits him with a big flank forearm to knock him out. So I'm sure AJ versus Omos will be a mania thing. Happy Corbin is 15. The crowd's asleep. Dolph Ziggler is 16. We are told it is. They're, they're giving out stats. And your favorite, Mark, numbers. And this is mm. Dolph Ziggler's 15th Royal Rumble. He has eliminated 12 men. Oh, wow. I'm doing some math. Is that in the Guinness like, Book of World uh, Records? That's Almost. That's pretty bad. Later, I think they said uh, Brock, and once they're 13 men, out, men out, 13 men out in one match. Dolph has 12 and 15. Seems like a poor ratio. It's a bad average. Yeah, Dominic got in there and got out somehow. Austin hey, uh, Mark, what did you think of the numbers video this year? Uh, I only saw it during the pre-show. That's the only one they did. Oh, they didn't. Well, they did, do it on Sma they the did, it, they did it one time on SmackDown. Huh, yeah, uh, it was the same stats video that they always show. You know, Santino got eliminated in one second. Like, motherfucker, I know. You've been talking about it ever since it fucking happened. Like, I don't want to talk about the stats video. I hate it. I hate the fucking stats video. For fuck's sake, stop it. They pay some. I know I say this every year, but they pay some asshole. At WWE headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut, they pay some asshole to make that video every year. And all they do is like, well, I'll just add one, and I'll add one, and I'll add one, and I'll add three minutes, 22 seconds. Yeah, I'm done. Like, 
who is this for? <laughs> like, are they doing it? Like, uh, anyway, uh, just just go. Just keep going. <laughs> Mark versus the stats video is my favorite wrestling feud ever. <laughs> So there's 16 dudes out there. The crowd's counting down to number 17, which is going to be Seamus. But suddenly, Chad Gable and Dolph Ziggler just decide, fuck it, let's go. <laughs> and they start to grapple, and it's awesome. Like, stop the rumble. I want to watch this. I want to watch Chad Gable and Dolph Ziggler go at it. That's going to rule. I got four seconds of it. Uh, Seamus is 17. We got Rick. someone here who says they can't tell the difference between Madcap Moss and Rick Boogs. Well, one of them looks like a star, and the other guy looks like a guy, because they cut his fucking hair off. Yeah, they, they got the alike. same haircut now. God. No, they don't. Didn't. Boogs has short hair. They cut all of his hair off. Yeah. He's now well, just, just a guy in a singlet, and they go, oh, well, you know, and this right, is one I heard today, because I was mad they got his hair cut. They're like, oh, he's supposed to be, uh, uh, um. The yoke Freddie his name? Mercury. Yeah, Freddie Mercury. I'm like, yeah. have you ever seen Freddie Mercury? It looks nothing like Boogs. God, yeah. let the guy have his fucking long hair back. He's a guitar player. They have the same mustache. And he could pump Bro, a human being with one He is one very hand. strong. My dad has that mustache. I don't look at him and go, fuck, that guy looks like, you know, what's his name? Your dad, your dad does not look like Freddie being? Mercury. No, he doesn't look like Freddie Mercury at all. No, not no. even a little bit. Can he lift you up with one hand over his head? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. lifting a guy up over your head with one arm and eliminating from the rumble with a one-arm press slam and the fucking camera misses it? Well, that happened here on this show, yep. everybody. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah, so he's big and strong. He pressed young Mr. Gable out o over his head with one arm for reps, mind you. Ridiculous power in this Boogs fella. Another one you miss because you don't watch the shows, Vinny, but uh, for about four weeks now, they've been doing this storyline with uh, Ray and Dominic and uh, Ziggler and Rude and um, uh, Montez and, and uh, Dawkins where they just keep having these nothing matches on Raw, and then when the match is over, they all throw each other over the top rope. You know, it explains to the idiots how the Royal Rumble works. And uh, for three, four weeks now, Ray and Dominic have been eliminating each other and having, you know, discussions backstage about what might happen if they're in the ring together and if they eliminate each other and anything like that. They fucking threw out Dominic before Ray even showed up. Hmm. Yeah. Correct. Why do I watch these shows? Why does anybody... Yeah, Dominic has that real nice mullet going now. Well, yeah, he's got the Eddie Guerrero mullet. It's really nice. Well, Eddie Guerrero is his real dad. That's sure, tr that's true. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an inherited mullet. It's yeah. in his jeans. <laughs> Can have a mullet in your jeans? Sure, sure. It's so disgusting. Boogs continues to just manhandle people, and and Gable's a great athlete, but he's very small. But when he grabs, uh, he pressed Dolph over his head. I think he threw Dolph out, and he starts manhandling Riddick Moss, who was an, an NFL player. He's he's big. This Boogs fella is a beast, and they have him doing a wacky guitar player gimmick and showing his strength in the Rumble and dressing like a dork and getting thrown out and double teamed and eliminated. So so uh, Madcap and Baron throw out Boogs. The shiny happy, shiny happy people here are very pleased with themselves until Drew McIntyre comes out at 21. He kills them both, leaves the ring to kill them more, and he accomplished his mission because they were dead by the end of this. You get... My favorite part, Owens comes out, Rey Mysterio comes out, and then my favorite part of the Rumble, Kofi Kingston comes out. <laughs> Michael Cole starts going off. Oh, you can't have a Rumble highlight reel without Kofi Kingston. <laughs> God. One of the greatest all-time Royal Rumble stars, even though he's never won one or I don't think he's even placed in a Final Four, but damn it, he's a great star because he almost gets thrown out all the time before really getting thrown out. He gets in the apron. I think it's Owens who hits him. And his plan is to go flying off and, like, hug the barricade. Wait, by the way, he lands on his ribs. It's painfully the way. But he's supposed to, like, hang his feet off the, the, the mat, pretty black mats, but he totally fails, and his feet touch, and he's out. I wasn't, well, in, the, I wasn't in the garden when Bruno Sammartino lost to Ivan Koloff. I was in the Superdome when The Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. And watching this St. Louis crowd, it was the same thing. They went silent. They wanted to see Kofi do something cool. Kofi screwed it up and didn't do anything cool, and they didn't know what to do. Well, it was weird because when he did it, like we were watching on television, and and you could see that his feet hit the ground briefly, but then he pulled them up onto the uh, onto the wall, and I think that everybody had the same thought, which was he touched the ground. But I do want to see what he was going to try. So there was like this <laughs> this feeling of. Well, it's bullshit. I mean, do we really have to throw the guy out if he fucked up the spot? Or, like, are we going to call it, like, a shoot? And even the referee's, like, standing there for a while. 
And then Kofi's like hanging onto the wall and he's like looking over the ref, like, what color are they gonna make? And finally the ref, like the ref didn't want to do this. You can see he just kind of goes over there and his head's kinda down. He's like it's sulking. Kofi, fuck you. Pat him on the back, the dude. Ground. We got the video right there, and Kofi's like, ah, Kofi's the whole all building mad. Can see it. I was like, oh, that was rough. Now, so now the reason they were silent at first is because they had just thought they had witnessed Kofi crushing his sternum Not on too. top of the barricade. Not My too. gosh. So Kofi takes to Twitter to quote, it is better to try and fail than never to try at all. And he attributes this quote to someone said this. <laughs> oh, this is 25. I didn't do. Nobody cares about this rumble for a while. They were so sad that Kofi got thrown out and, and didn't get to do anything. Plus, none of the AW guys had shown up yet. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. There's no Cody. <laughs> Where was Cody in this rumble? Moxley. Yeah, Moxley. I heard... Jericho was going to be there. Mm -hmm. Fuck, yeah. none of them were. Huh. Big E comes out. They like him for a little bit, but then the match continues. They don't care. Bad Bunny is 27. Now, Brian, as we've established quite clearly in this show, I don't watch SmackDown or Raw. Have they plugged Bad Bunny's appearance in this match? No, he was a surprise. No. A surprise, surprise celebrity entrance. <laughs> yeah. he, he just <laughs> happened to be there. Gotcha. Just want to make sure. <laughs> it's Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny's awesome. I got no problem with Bad Bunny being in the Rumble. Bad Bunny's one of the top ten guys this match, probably. And hits Riddle with a Destroyer. Place goes crazy. He looks awesome doing everything he does. Um, he eliminates Sheamus. Turns on Ray. Almost wipes him out. And then they are... Uh, there's a bunch of eliminations that are missed because the crowd is erupting for, as Michael Cole calls it, the euphoria of Shane O'Mac. Hmm. One of the great mysteries to me is why people <laughs> cheer this man. He's plainly terrible. He gets to the ring and... You know what I think part of it is? No, I have no idea. I think, well, I mean, there's there's two parts of it because, I mean... There's nostalgia, that's it. Well, I think that the music that he uses, because it is the exact same music from the only era that anyone has cared about in the last 30 years, I think it gets people to, like, go a little bit crazy when they hear that that song. But there are people that genuinely, like, they love Shane McMahon, and I don't know why, but, I mean, this, this, I mean, when he did that first return, like, seven years ago or whatever, and the place just absolutely, like, I thought the building was going to collapse. It was so loud when he came back. I was like, I don't get it, bro, but people like the guy. Maybe, maybe it's a thing where, hey, if that guy can be a wrestler, <laughs> I must be able to be a wrestler. The attainability factor. All I need to do, all I need is to be uh, six foot two and large and muscular and have a father who's an evil billionaire who owns the company. That's all. Anyone can yeah. do this. So he gets out there and he starts punching dudes. And every For single real. one, you, you can tell, A, they look terrible, and B, they hurt like hell. He's just <laughs> throwing hands, man. <laughs> just, just, and he's um, also, he's also, he got out there and within like four seconds, he was dude, just drenched in Yes. Sweat. How? Just blown out. I've never been this sweaty in my life. And I did <laughs> wrestle. I had matches. I was like, did this guy just start building a fucking house in the middle of the ring or something? How is he oh so my sweaty God. already? It's, it's, it's amazing. So uh, Randy Orton's 29. It's in St. Louis. Everyone loves him. And he and RK Bro, he and Riddle, they actually are friends and work together. And there was no big conflict and no betrayal. There I were, thought... For sure, they're in Randy Orton's hometown. I thought for sure this is the perfect opportunity for Randy to turn on, uh, on, on the bro. Thank God he didn't. <laughs> didn't happen. They were they were friends till the end. So number thirty in the match is he so technically a surprise entrant. It's Brock Lesnar. <laughs> a surprise to who? Doesn't make uh, sense. The forty thousand people in the stands, they were. Excited to see him. I was praying we would get a Brock versus Riddle showdown. We got Brock versus Bad Bunny instead. Brock did toss Riddle. He, oh my he, gosh, he caught he, Riddle out of midair. It's <laughs> later. It's later. He actually got Riddle, and I know, I know Riddle's not heavyweight, but he's a grown ass man. And Brock caught him. <laughs> just okay. You, you leave now. I threw him out of the ring. I mean, dude, he caught a flying man who did not fly right, and like, yeah, there's yeah. no, there's, there was no zero leverage to this catch. No, it was like I'm gonna grab you and I'm gonna throw you out like your hay. This is not like a trapeze <laughs> artist or whatever holding their arms out ready to catch. Nah, no. it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's an irregular shape flying in a regular angle, caught in a regular position, and it looked super easy because he's Brock Lesnar, he's not human. So we got Brock versus Bad Bunny, which was awesome for what it was, and Bunny is yeah. five out of the ring. The final four entrants. In the Royal Rumble, in the year of our Lord, 2022, Brock Lesnar, Matt Riddle, Drew McIntyre, and Shane McMahon. So <laughs> here, 
right here in the final four is where they, they do the spot where Lesnar catches Riddle and throws him out. So what's supposed to happen next is Shane's in the ropes and Brock Lesnar with his arm, which is about yay wide, is going to come and hit Shane in the face and not is the yay wide if you missed it on video. He's going to hit Shane in the face and throw him over the top rope and eliminate him. And Shane McMahon doesn't go because mm-hmm. he's a terrible wrestler. Mm-hmm. And so time freezes. And Brock takes a step back and he turns his head and he begins to just wind up his arm like Popeye. And I, <laughs> I nearly soiled myself. I was terrified. I was going to see a man decapitated here on a live premium live event. I thought he was going to clothesline Shane McMahon's head off on live TV and his spinal cord and, and various veins and, and vessels would be exposed to the world. <laughs> As strong as Brock Lesnar is, as scary as Brock Lesnar is, he just hit him really hard in the chest and pushed him over and eliminated him, and he did not murder the son of a billionaire here. So it's down to... uh, uh, Why do people cheer for Shane? I must ask this again. I don't understand. It's Brock and Drew, which I feel like I've seen 500 times already, and they count each other's finish, and Brock gets an F5 and throws Drew out of the ring. You know what's amazing is... is, And I, I just... I can't figure this out. So this match started... At 10 minutes after the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. And I knew that they wanted to go off the air by 9, okay? And listen, I'm no math major, as a lot of you are aware. Right. But if the match starts at 10 after, and they announce it's 90-second intervals, Mm -hmm. last person comes in with five minutes left before the end of the show. Right. Okay. So when Brock came in, they were fucking rushing, rushing, rushing rushing to get this fucking show off the air. And all I could think was, Mark, how many Royal Rumbles have we watched where they blatantly fudge the time? Uh, Every. All of them. Every single fucking one. So you're telling me when, like, Bob Rude was coming down to the ring, they couldn't shave 15 seconds off that one? And when Otis is coming out, they couldn't shave... 25 seconds off that one so that you actually had time to like if this is not you know hindsight's 2020 it's like going in i'm looking at the clock going they're gonna be fucking rushing at the end if they don't fudge the time and i was watching like the whole time i'm looking at my watch going they're not fudging the fucking time like what the fuck's going on here and then sure enough they're rushing like crazy Vinny, your recap of everything Brock did uh, was five times longer than the amount of time that Brock was actually in the ring. And uh, one spot, Drew's out. Brock goes like this. The sign lights on fire. He goes, ah, ha, ha, and they go off the air. That was the end of the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brock, I don't get it. So that was the rumble. I thought uh, there's a term in, in, in sports analysis. It's the call it replacement level. A replacement level player. It's the kind of player you can get at any does, you, you can get this guy whenever you want to. Easy, quick trade or sign a, guy off, uh, sign a guy off the street, whatever. This was a replacement level Royal Rumble. It was not the worst Rumble I ever saw, but it's like the baseline for plain old competence. There was nothing really memorable happened. Uh, there was no huge surprise. There was no great few started. And it ended with the same guys on top. I've been watching for years. Well, I want to say one thing about both Rumbles very quickly. Then we'll get uh, the ranking here from uh, Mark, how this uh, ranked and the other Rumbles. So uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but uh, the the layout of the men's and women's rumble changed like 50 times over three days because Vince is out of his mind and he just can't let anything be good enough and change it, change it, change it. This person, change it, change it, change it, change it, change it. And at the end of the day, it was like, it was just two rumbles. I mean, the men's rumble was largely boring. The women's rumble was, I mean, it was fun because it was like there was so much horrible stuff in it and funny stuff. And, you know, it entertained you in that way, but it wasn't like it was good. And you remember like in the old days, there'd be stories to the rumble or for a while they had the deal where, oh, Bob Rude gets in the ring and he runs wild and everything because, you know, he's about to be eliminated. They didn't have anything like that. It's just like dudes come to the ring you know, every now and then there'd be some story, but half the time they didn't even pay off the story. It was just like, it was almost like a shoot Royal Rumble. It's like, right before the show, they go, okay, here's your numbers. Go out there, do some shit. That guy's winning. You know, shoot Battle Royal. And uh, that was that. So I can understand people being disappointed by these two Rumbles. Hey, girl, how was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on, and we did a little... Texas two-step. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, 
These girls are so ew. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? Wendy Chu? Then it ends. Bro, that was like easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.